Today, we're gonna make it so we can do multiple animations. So we'll animate multiple properties of our control nodes and we can do it simultaneously or sequentially. And before I forget, you can also get uh, the source files for what we're doing on my Patreon, as well as a bunch of other uh, Gato-based projects. So you can check that out in the description. Now in our current setup, we've created an add tween function that creates a, a new tween and then adds a tween property. We're gonna build upon this so it's more of a all powerful add tween function. And in that process, we're actually going to be cleaning up quite a bit of this code. So let's jump down to our, our add tween function right here. In fact, let me get some more space so it's a little bit easier to see and blow that up just a tad. Now our parameters are, are gonna change because we're gonna, we're gonna fill this out quite a bit. We wanna have a lot of different options when we are doing our new tweens. Uh, but for right now, we're just gonna leave this be. Uh, our first line is gonna stay the same because we're still gonna create a tween anytime we run this function. And we're gonna delete this line right here because we're gonna do our properties in a little bit of a different way. For our next line, we're gonna use what is called the set parallel function within the tween. Now, what this does, if set parallel is true, it means we're gonna do all of those animations at the same time. And if it's set to false, it means it's gonna be sequential, meaning one animation plays, finishes, and then the next one starts. We wanna be able to decide if we wanna do parallel or not in our inspector. So we're gonna create an export function for that, and then we're gonna run that through whenever we run this function. We'll set this to parallel, and then this will be one of our, our new properties up here. And that'll simply just be a, a Boolean. Now these are gonna freak out up here and that's okay because we're actually, we're gonna delete those eventually anyway. And before we just tweened our scale property, we want to be able to tween a lot of different properties and to expand that list in the inspector. So to do that, we're gonna create a new variable called properties. And this is gonna be a new export variable called properties. This will be an array. And within this, we're gonna put some uh, properties that are typical of a control node. That includes scale, position, rotation, size, and self-modulate. If you've not used self-modulate or modulate before, it, it adjusts the color of uh, the control node, but you can also adjust the alpha transparency. And I think that's a pretty useful feature. So we're gonna add that into our property list. And now that that's all set up, we can go back down to our tween function and we're gonna run through these properties. We're gonna run through that array with a for loop. And for each property in our properties list, we wanna add our tween property function. So for each property in our properties array, we're gonna add a tween property line. Our target will be the object. Our property will actually be our property. Now we actually have to use this str function to make sure that whatever is spit out here is a string because it has to be a, a string for it to match a property. And so that's what this str, this string function does. It takes whatever this is and it turns it into a string. Next, we need our value. And now we're gonna come back to this because we need to adjust how we're doing our values. For now, we're gonna put values, which is gonna give an error, but that's fine. And then seconds, which will be another parameter within our, our tween. And then we're gonna set a transition and that transition is gonna use another parameter within our tween function. And then we're also going to set ease. And that's gonna contain the easing parameter, which again will be another parameter. So let's add our seconds parameter. So what the seconds parameter does is it tells us how long we want these tweens to take. And if we run these in parallel or at the same time, that's how long the total animation is gonna take. And because we're putting this as a parameter, we can set this individually for every tween we ever do. Then we have our transition parameter, and that's gonna take a tween transition type, which we've already done, I believe, yeah, up here in our export. Remember we could uh, take our little enumeration here and set our transition. We're gonna do that within our parameters, and then we're also adding our easing, which is the same process. So it's a tween, and ease 
type. So this is going to throw an error, obviously, because we don't have this, this values thing. So this values is actually going to be another parameter. This one is going to be a dictionary parameter. And what we're going to do is we're going to create um, separate dictionaries for hovering, hovering off, uh, eventually for whenever we enter in the animation. And we need to set exactly what those values should be. In some cases, it might just be a new scale. It might be the current scale plus something else. We need to be able to really fine tune those things. So we're going to do those by hand. Uh, in fact, let's go ahead and do that right now. So there's a weird thing about um, control nodes. And especially when you have uh, control nodes that are children of a parent control node, and it's getting its layout, its size, its scale, everything from the parents. There's sort of a, a weird what comes first issue whenever you, you run the scene. So when you run the scene initially, it does not um, have the proper scale. It's, it's incorrect. It needs to, to load everything. And the way that the Gato engine loads things, it's sort of backwards in the tree. We're already doing a call deferred, meaning we're, we're waiting till everything is done. We've had to use this because of this from center and, and changing the pivot offset. We're going to have to do this again in order to get the proper scaling and sizing and everything else. So let's jump down into our, our setup function, which is again being run with our call deferred. And here we're going to set two new dictionaries, one for our default value and then one for our hover values. And in fact, we should probably uh, set these up as variables up here. So let's do that. We'll add a variable hover values. This will be a dictionary. Then another variable for our default values. And that will also be a dictionary. Then down in our setup function, we're going to populate these variables a little bit. For our default values, we're going to run through each of the properties that we're adjusting or that we could adjust. Now we've already set these properties up here. In fact, we can just copy these and bring them on down just like that. And so we're adjusting scale, position, rotation, size, self-modulate. And we're going to turn these into a dictionary value. So for our scale, for our default value, we just want to take our, our target scale value. And the same for our position, which will be the position of our targets. And then we'll just run through and, and set these also to target rotation. The size will be the target size. And then target modulates. Now, if you don't remember, or this is a new tutorial for you, target is the, the parent object, the object that we are animating. Uh, we, we've already set that in our, our ready function up there. And so what the default values is, it's going to be the values we want to go back to after we say hover off. It's going to be home base. We're going to do the same thing for our hover values. So what this is allowing me to do is to really specify how I want these parameters, these properties to, to be adjusted. Instead of just setting them to one value, I could add a value to the target position, which is what we're going to do in our hover values. I'll actually just type this out this time. So for our hover scale, we just want to, like we did in the last episode, get our, our scale value that we've set in the inspector. And then for our position, we're going to take the target position as the, the base, and then we're going to add to it whatever hover position we've set in the inspector. So if we want the um, control node to move 20 pixels to the right, then it's going to be the target position plus 20 pixels to the right. That's all that means. So we do target position plus hover position. Now we don't actually have these yet, so we're going to create these in export variables. We're going to do the same for our rotation. We're going to get the target rotation plus we're going to get the, uh, we're going to use a degree to radian function so we can set the degrees in our export variable degrees to radian function and then we need to float and that's going to be hover rotation then we're also going to adjust the size now the cool thing about tweens is that you normally can't adjust the size of a child control node that's within a parent control node 
it's it's set by the parent and you can't adjust that within the inspector, but you can adjust it in code and you can do it in a tween. So that's a cool thing to know. And we will add our hover size option. And the last one will be our self modulate. And we're just gonna set it to our hover modulate option. All right, so let's fill out these export variables now that we've created these two uh, dictionaries that we'll use. Now we already have a, a hover scale and time and transition type. We're gonna get rid of those because we're gonna make them specific to our hover settings because we're gonna be adding other uh, animation types like uh, entering or maybe a loop animation and we wanna have different options. So we're just gonna delete those, okay? And we've got our from center, we've got our properties. Uh, one thing that I did talk about before was the, the parallel animations. So what we can do is add an export variable for that. We'll call this Papa, <laughs> call it parallel animations. This will be a Boolean and we'll set it to true by default. And we've got our properties and in fact, let's um, let's use the export group option here. So you can do export variables. You can also add this export group. And what this is gonna do is kind of separate out your, your variables here and make it a little bit uh, cleaner, a little bit more organized. So we'll set uh, just a basic options group and we'll call this hover settings. And then in fact, save that. Although I think I do have some errors, so I would not, not be happy. Yeah, it's, it's not happy yet. Comment that out, add a pass, and then hover scale. We haven't done those. All right, let's finish up our export variables and then I can show you how cool the export group stuff is. All right, so there's quite a few that we need to add. The first one would be hover time, which will be a float. Set this to 0.1 seconds. That will be how long the, the tween lasts. And then we're gonna add hover transition. This will be a tween transition type that'll populate our, our dropdown. Then we're gonna add hover easing. This will be tween ease type. And we're gonna add hover, whoop, forgot my var, hover position. That will be a vector two. Next one, done position. So we're gonna do scale. That will be a vector two. And we will set a default here just so we don't get, you know, zeroed out. And then we need our rotation. This will be a float. We also need our size. That's a vector two. And finally, our hover modulates, and that will be a color. And I'm gonna set this to white as the, the default, because if you just multiply it by, by white, you're multiplying by one. Uh, so just, it'll keep the existing color. We won't make any changes. All right, so that's a, a lot of uh, export variables. We have one more error down here and I think it's, yeah, I didn't type an S. Got to type your S in the add tween. So if you have something that doesn't work, that might've been it. I apologize. All right. So we don't have any more errors. Now we should save it and let's look at our cool groups now. So we created an options group. I know it's a little bit small to see on the screen maybe, but we have an options group and we have our hover settings group. Everything's nice and organized. We even have our properties array. We're good to go. All right, so we've created our export variables. We've got all the things we wanna change. We've uh, created a default and hover values. They're ready to go. And we've created our new add tween super function. We just need to connect this to our, our signals, which is the mouse on, mouse off. What we did in the last episode was take those signals, connect them to our on hover, and that worked fine. We could do that, um, but you can also just bind these to our add tween and, and skip that step. You know, why create another step? So we're actually gonna delete these. We don't need these anymore. A little bit cleaner code. And we're going to connect these uh, signals to our add tween, except we're gonna need to add all of these parameters because we've, we've created it. 
It's actually really easy to do that if you haven't done that before. So when we enter our mouse, we're gonna do add tween for our callable, and then we do a bind function. And we probably should uh, enter this out because the list is gonna get long. So when you bind, you can just list um, parameters as if it were uh, you know, calling the function. And this is where we're gonna fill out all of these add tween values, parallel, seconds, transition, all this other stuff. So the issue is with the bind, you don't get the autofill. So we're just gonna have to remember what we need to put in. So the first thing we need, in fact, let's make that small and now we can see everything, nice. So the first thing we need is our value. So when we enter, when we hover over our object, we want to get our hover values. So we're gonna pass that in just like that. The next one we need is whether or not we're in our parallel so we can run our parallel animations variable. We're not running it, we're calling it. That's gonna be our true and false. Now you could really, you know, make an individual parallel Boolean for each, you know, the hover, the off hover. You could do that if you wanted to. I've just made it a global Boolean. You can decide how you wanna do it. All right, the next one we need is our seconds and that will be our hover time. And the next is transition, that's hover transition. It's nice when the variables make sense. And then easing, which would be hover easing. Missed my S, there we go. It's twice I've done that. All right, so now we've connected our and tween function with our parameter values. We're good to go. Let's do the same thing for our hover off, just so we can actually test this. And it's the same process. So instead though, we're going to be using our default values. We'll call the parallel animations Boolean again, and we'll keep the, uh, the hover time the same. And again, you could create different export variables for when you hover on, when you hover off, and, and have those be different. Totally fine. Um, hover transition and then hover easing. All right, so we've got five parameters. We've got one, two, three, four, five parameters. We should be good to go. Actually, we can actually move that into, into there too. Let's move that. We're gonna move our connect signals. Let's just do it after everything to be safe. There we go, that's cleaner. Okay, so we've got our signals connected to our tween function. Within our tween function, we are running through these uh, value dictionaries. So it's gonna go, okay, we need to create a tween property for scale. And then that's gonna be our value. Position, that's our value. Rotation, that's our value. But we're only running through um, the properties within uh, that we've set in the inspector. Now we could turn off, you know, scale or position or whatever you wanted to do. All right, so let's test this out. We have an error. Let's go see what this is complaining about. I usually don't have errors when I'm running through this, um, but sometimes you do. I think it's important to show that because sometimes things screw up. So I'll explain what's going on here. We're running through our properties and then for each property, we're adding this tween property function, and that's that's gonna be our tween animation. We've got our target, we've got our, our string property, which again is running through those. So scale, position, rotation, size, self-modulate, and then we're getting a value, but we're, we're just passing the entire dictionary if we just run values. What we need to do is, is call in the actual um, key which we haven't done. So we just need to add the, uh, whatever property we're in, scale, position, rotation, what have you, we'll get that value instead. So let's try that and see uh, if it does a little bit better. All right, there we go. Let's adjust some of these values just to show you what we can do now. So we're, we're doing a hover time of 0.1 for our new game button. Let's make that 0.5, make the transition to um, back, we'll ease in, ease out. We'll make the hover position go 20 pixels to the right. Scale is fine. Let's just do a rotation for, for kicks. And size, um, yeah, let's do let's do negative 20 on the size. There you go. I think the rotation kind of makes it hard to see. 
we're running all of these animations now. We're running a position, scale, rotation. Well, not rotation anymore, but size. And it's running all at the same time. Now, if I turn off the parallel animations, these will run one at a time, just like that. And then we hover off. Pretty cool. So you could want to, to do that individually or all together. And then let's do the um, hover modulate just to show. In fact, let's make it change colors, do a blue or something. Now it's multiplying or it's adding to whatever it already was, which is orange, and that's why we're getting a green. But you do see that the, the white text is blue. Turn that back to parallel and let's do transparency. Run that, and there you go. So with a little bit of work in the uh, animation component and thinking through the process a little bit, we now have really easy to get to settings for all of these different animation types. And I mean, it takes two seconds to, to add these animations. Thanks for watching. And uh, as always, keep creating. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider it a like and subscribe to the channel as we're gonna be covering a lot more Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.